Hi, my name's Phil and I like talking about politics and lighting. No, I don't. Uh, so in this video, what I want to talk about is the last possible option that Boris Johnson would have to extend his prime ministerial career by ironically shortening it. But first, if you find yourself enjoying the video, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to the channel. So let's appraise ourselves of the situation. This bill, which on Monday is going to become law, that is certain now, is going to compel Boris Johnson to seek an extension on October the 19th. Boris Johnson does not want to do this. In fact, it was quite ironic that yesterday, or today as I do this, but yesterday as you're watching it, he stood in front of a load of police and said that he'd rather die than obey the law. Of course, a lot of police chiefs were not very happy that he decided to use the event to go on a bit of a Brexit rant. But imagine this scenario. He's in front of police saying, I don't want to obey the law. In fact, I so desperately don't want to obey the law that I'd rather be dead in a ditch. Okay. But anyway, the point is that he doesn't want, he became, prime. he wants to become prime minister. He joined the Commons specifically to become prime minister. He's not someone who's had a long political career and climbed the ladder. He was straight in as a minister pretty much. Uh, he joined, he was already a, a luminary of the party, I suppose, in some ways, a, certainly a celebrity. And he has wanted to be prime minister as soon as he entered parliament. He's a bit annoyed that it's taken this long, quite frankly, uh, even though he's not been an MP really for that long. And, um, and he certainly doesn't want to go out as the shortest serving prime minister. But he became prime minister on the back of a stance of hardline Brexit. Basically, the we are leaving the EU do or die on October the 31st. He's in a situation at the moment where he has no majority. He, you know, in fact, he even more impressively than Theresa May reduced the numbers of MPs he has in the Commons. He is on a collision course with a general election. He's been preparing it since day one. But he was preparing it since day one, not because he desperately wanted a general election, but because he knew he would likely face one anyway, and he may as well go on the attack. You know, the best form of defence is attack. OK. But he's so committed to it in the belief that he could get it in October that he went full tilt for it. The problem is he's now realising that actually Jeremy Corbyn is listening to rather more sensible people than he usually does. And actually, I think even at the moment, Len McCluskey, who has a, an unhealthy control over Corbyn, even he's not gung-ho about a general election in October. And so it's been made easier for him to sort of stay the course and say, actually, do you know what suits us best? Having a general election when Boris Johnson is at his weakest, and that is in November, preferably a few weeks into November. Then we'll have a general election. Boris Johnson can't avoid it. Cannot avoid it. So he needs it in October. Why does he need it in October? Because in October he has two advantages. One, we haven't left the EU yet. So the people who are willing to believe that a no deal Brexit isn't all that bad. And like a lot of people think, well, things will eventually work out. They're not shown the chaos that will be obvious if we do leave without a deal in November uh, and we have the general election a few weeks later. The other advantage he has is he can still insist he's taken us out with no deal, which at the moment looks extremely unlikely. But at the same time, he can still claim that that's exactly what he's going to do. He can talk tough like he's been doing today or yesterday. And I've no doubt today anyway, even though I'm trying to see into the future here uh, and say that he's just not going to obey the law. And that's all there is to it. Nothing Parliament can do about it. And a lot of people may believe that. So he wants the general election now. Labour aren't doing very well. The Tories look like they're doing OK. The Brexit party might, he hopes, be minded either to not put up candidates uh, in a lot of the, the constituencies that the Tories would expect to win. Or, at the very least, be in such a weak position because Boris Johnson, he thinks, has out-Brexit party the Brexit party. But come November, this is all gone, because if he has managed to get us out with no deal, which is extremely unlikely, then the consequences become obvious. He would lose that general election. If he hasn't managed to take us out of the EU, then everyone will look at him and go, you couldn't take us out of the EU. 
He cannot risk that. He needs a general election this October. He's not getting it. He attempted to goad Corbyn into granting it. Corbyn's not going for it. He's not falling for it. What can he do? Nothing. He does not have the power to trigger a general election. Prime Ministers used to have that power. They don't. Thanks to the Conservative government that's been going since 2010. But they don't have that power. So what could he do to try and exacerbate it? Well, the reason, and he knows this, the only reason he is still Prime Minister today is because Jeremy Corbyn was not able to issue a vote of no confidence in him on Tuesday. Well, he was able to, but he wouldn't have won it. The reason for this is because if you issue a vote of no confidence and you defeat the government, 14-day period begins. Now, in that time, you're supposed to find another MP who can gain the confidence of the House and then they will be appointed Prime Minister by the Queen. However, if you don't do that within 14 days, then a general election is triggered. So Boris Johnson is thinking to himself, right, there's so much infighting. These guys, this so-called rebel alliance, and I don't think they mind being called that, cannot get behind a compromised candidate. There's too much infighting. So here's what I'll do. I'll declare a confidence motion in myself. I mean, he could do one of two things. He could actually just go to the Queen and ask the Queen to nominate, to, to appoint Corbyn as Prime Minister. I don't think he'll do that. Um, that would be a bit mad. Um, I mean, under, under that circumstance, obviously, I suppose, from his point of view, the, he, he would hope then to himself, as he would then be leader of the opposition, he would issue a vote of no confidence in Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister... And unless he was backed, then that begins that process that then potentially triggers a general election. That would be an extreme way of doing it. The other way is on Monday, he could issue uh, a confidence vote in himself. I mean, Labour are not going to abstain from that one, are they? They're, they're probably going to have to say, well, yeah, we don't have confidence in you. Um, I suppose it'll be up to other parties. Some may abstain, but it's weird. It's going to be weird with the numbers. Basically, it is possible that Boris Johnson could lose that, even if a low try and abstain to try and stop it being an issue. Um, I think the SNP would actually, you know, vote against the government there. I think, you know, the government would lose that and Boris Johnson would be thinking, right, brilliant. You lot haven't got anyone to replace me with. So I'll just count down in two weeks time, a general election will be triggered. Now, that general election won't be for mid-October. He keeps saying he wants one in mid-October. No one believes he wants one in mid-October. What he wanted was to goad Corbyn into voting for his thing, where he's saying he wants it to be the 15th of October. Then he says, actually, I've changed my mind, 31st of October. Because the Prime Minister can set the date of the election. Now, they can't keep changing it, but they don't have to set that date until after a, tr a general election is triggered. And under the Fixed Terms Parliament Act, the general election isn't triggered until two-thirds of MPs vote for it. So the vote would have had to have gone through, and then it's too late for MPs to do anything. But this other way means... He just has to wait out two weeks. Corbyn will be insisting that he become prime minister. The, uh, the, the, sorry, the SNP might be OK with that. I think they will. Um, the Liberal Democrats won't be OK with that. These other Conservative rebels won't be OK with that. So Corbyn won't get the numbers he needs. So two weeks of infighting and then what? It's a risk that that's what he might be thinking. I always say might. This is just I don't know that Johnson has threatened this. It's just his last real chance. The thing is, I would think at this point, as I've already alluded to, you've got conservative rebels. You've got 22 former who used to be conservatives at the start of this week. They have all risked much. Boris Johnson has risked and lost a lot to try and oppose this bill and he's failed. But let us not forget 22 other MPs risked and lost. Certainly 21 of them did. I don't know how you debate the guy who crossed the floor to the Lib Dems, but 21 of them definitely have risked and lost to get to see this bill through. The idea that they would allow Boris Johnson on the 19th of October to refuse to write that letter and just sit back helpless is ridiculous. They won't do that. How far are they willing to go to ensure this no deal doesn't happen? They don't want to get behind Jeremy Corbyn as this caretaker prime minister. But when it comes up to it, if Corbyn decides to play a massive game of chicken, might they anyway?
to stop the no deal. If it becomes the only way to stop the no deal, might be the only way. This is the risk that, that, that Johnson may take because it is his only chance, right? And a lot of people are talking about this, okay, he just ignores the law. I don't think he will. And the reason I don't think he will is because he set so much store against defeating this bill. He risked so much. He lost so much to do this and failed. Why would he have done that if he thought he could just get away with disobeying the law? He knows he can't. Because the other thing as well is, if he issues this confidence motion himself next week, Parliament has two weeks to agree on a compromise candidate, whoever it may be. But if he doesn't, if he just waits till October the 19th with the intention of refusing to seek that extension, as he said he would, he's effectively, because the MPs are not just going to sit back and think, yeah, Johnson, of course, he's going to write the letter. He won't dare disobey the law. They're not thinking that. They're thinking he is going to try and get out of it. So that gives them longer. Frankly, it gives them about six weeks to to agree on a compromise candidate. They will already be talking about this right now. What happens when Johnson refuses to do it? Right, we're going to have to get rid of him. To get rid of him without triggering a general election, we're going to have to get around a compromise candidate. Because if they don't, the general election, you know, well, Parliament will be dissolved during this period of time and, and we could end up crashing out with no deal. In fact, we probably would. So they have to get behind someone to replace him. It is the only way. So from Johnson's point of view, it may be a case of, do we give them just two weeks to try and do this, in which case they may not, or do we give them six whole weeks where they're certainly more likely to? And that may well be his final desperate act because that's the calculation. That is the simple calculation. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did and you want to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.